In iOS 11, we got the Files app, and in the Files app, we got support for tagging. Now, tagging has been around native to the Mac since Mavericks, and there was a bunch of third-party apps before that that brought tagging. But now that tagging's in iOS, I thought it might be kind of useful to take a look at it. I've been using tags since I've been using the iOS 11 beta. I always thought that was kind of something interesting to play around with, even when I was a Mac user, but they never synced over to iOS, so I didn't really bother. Um, I kind of figured it'd be kind of annoying to have them in one place, but not the other. But now that they're across the Apple platform, I figured let, let's take a look at it. Let's see what we can do with them. So first, let's take a look at my tagging system. Now, no two tagging systems are gonna be alike. Mine is not going to match what your, your needs and your needs won't match my needs. So really this video is about taking a look at A, how tags work, how I'm doing tagging, and kind of for you guys at least being able to get ideas from that to see if you're interested in using tags and what you can take away from how, what I've learned about tagging. The original way I did um, files in folders and stuff like that was exactly that. I used folders and subfolders and sub subfolders and basically just built a hierarchy of different folders to keep files in. And I always thought that was good for organization, but it's slow and it's really easy to forget where you save something, especially if you know things can belong in multiple places. That's honestly probably one of the worst things about using f files and folders. When I started using tags, I took the traditional idea of labeling everything by categories. And my categories are very generic and I did that on purpose. I wanted it to be easy for me to find exactly what I'm looking for within that tag. Now there could be lots of files or folders in the tag, but I, I can scroll through that stuff pretty quickly or you can search within once you're in that tag, you can find the stuff. I just wanted to make sure it was generic so it was really easy to decide when I was saving a file exactly where it needed to go and then I can pull it back up from there. The categories I use are archive and when I use archive um, what I mean by that is basically files or folders that I either don't want to delete yet or I haven't moved to my server or I just need to keep something around because I have a feeling I might need to come back to it but I don't want to save it in the main category of where it belongs. Temp is basically that, just that. It's temporary files that I may need for a project or a thing I'm working on for that second but once I'm done with that particular item, I know I won't ever need it again, so I can just delete it. It's kind of, it's basically for one-off things. Personal, here's where I keep all like my tax information, personal photos I might want, um, documents, receipts, things like that. That all goes in a personal. Photos, um, kind of generic photos that I may need that I want to edit or I may keep around like profile pictures or banner pictures. Um, logos can even go in here, so very generic stuff for photos. Graphics projects um, are exactly that, Pro graphic projects that I'm currently working on or have worked on in the past and I'm still keeping around just in case I need to come back to them. Most of the stuff is for this U the YouTube videos like my logos and things like that. Video projects are basically projects that I'm currently working on. So like this video, I currently have a folder set up in my video projects folder for this. Um, this can get pretty crazy, especially if I'm working on multiple projects at once. At some points I could be working on up to five different videos at the same time. Assets are um, basically for things that for either graphics projects, video projects, development projects, basically anything that I could be using as an asset. So graphic, graphic wise, music, sound, Sound, video clips, anything like that can be labeled as assets. This can get a little unwieldy and I probably need to come up with a better way to organize this particular category. But for right now, it seems to be working. I have a feeling in the next few months or so, it's gonna blow up and it's gonna become a little unwieldy. And last is development. I haven't been using too much of this because I haven't been saving development stuff in iCloud or Dropbox lately. I've been doing it all off my server. So there's not a whole lot in my development category, but there are a few like older apps and things like that that I've worked on. I just like to keep development around just because every once in a while I like to come back and pick it up and, and kind of work on that stuff. All my tags are very generic for a reason. Having more tags can make things harder to find, easy to make duplicates of things. I like to have this very set of generic um, tags. I think this this works very well for me. I think having these um, eight tags that just kind of allow me to work within the categories of that I'm already kind of doing all my work in. So I like having very small and generic 
categories. I can understand if somebody wants more detailed stuff, if, especially if they're doing lots of different kinds of work. All my work is very well related to each other, so it makes things kind of handy. So you probably noticed all my categories do have different colors to them. And um, I, the native iOS tagging system, there are a limited amount of colors. And I think a lot of people might groan over this, but I think that's a good thing. It does force you to keep limited categories and lim limited tags, kind of like what I was already talking about. Now you can do clear tags. There are tags that you can set up that don't have any color. That's what my archive tag has, because I don't really care if it doesn't have a color or not to that one. But I find having colors, because in my head I've associated each color with its tag, it's really easy just to see the tag color and know exactly what that's attached to. So for me, I like having the color coordination. I like having those rules basically around tagging. It makes things easy for me. It just so happened that the exact amount of tags that are available, the same amount of color tags that is, are the amount of color tags that I need. So I kind of got lucky there if my work life ever grows more and I start doing different stuff, I will definitely have to rethink the way I use tags. But for right now, it fits perfectly in the world of iOS tagging and kind of the way Apple designs tagging to work. Like I said, you don't have to use color tags. You can use all sorts of just the blank tags if you want, if you just want to search through text. Um, if you don't care about colors, there are the blank tags available. I don't, this isn't something I do too often, but you can use multiple tags per file. So if you've, so for me, a lot of times I will figure, find something that I think fits in photos and my graphics projects or something that fits in video projects and assets. So you can use multiple tags to put in files, especially if you're not sure um, if one belongs in one category or the other. Put it for two, and that way you know when you search for it, it'll be there. To set tags to your files, it's pretty easy. When you're using the share sheet to save your document to the files app, there's an option in there that you can just select the tag that you want. You can create a new tag if you want from here. You can assign it a color, blah, blah, blah. There's all sorts of the options right there just to assign the tag when you're saving a file. If you already have a file saved in files, it's really easy to tag it. You can either drag and drop it to the tag that's already been created, or you can long press on it, hit tags, and fill in the information you need, whether that's creating a new tag or assigning it to a current tag already. You can also sort by tags by pulling down on the menu and selecting tags from the sorting option. Tags do work in multiple cloud services, but for right now, it looks like Dropbox implementation in the Files app is very buggy, and it's just not quite working right with Dropbox. So if you're somebody that uses Dropbox and you wanna use tags, hopefully they fix that bug soon. If uh, you're willing to try iCloud, I would highly recommend it. It's been working great for me ever since I've been on the iOS 11 beta, and I really enjoy having the added ability to use tags. Some of you probably are thinking, why don't I just use Spotlight Search? Well, for me, I am terrible at remembering what I name files. And that could honestly be on me. It could be that I need to, uh, I need to be better about the way I save and name files, but I just find tagging so much quicker and so much easier to pull up a file. And Spotlight Search, whereas it's really great, it's just slow because you have to know exactly what the file is named. And if you have files that are named very similar to each other, you may have to do the search within the app feature. So let's talk about what I want from tagging. First off, I want system-wide keyboard shortcuts for not just assigning tags, because that would be great, but for also pulling up tags as well. Some sort of quick feature that I could just hit a keyboard shortcut and I get all the tags for my video projects or assets come up. Another keyboard shortcut when I hit it, it gets assigned to my video projects tag or my graphics projects tag or assets tag. I think those would be really handy keyboard shortcuts to have just system wide. I want tagging in more than just files. I want it in notes and mail too. I also want it opened up to third party apps so we can tag within apps like Bear or LumaFusion and things like that. I think it would be really handy, especially if we did get system-wide keyboard shortcuts to be able to tag in other apps other than files or when you're using the share sheet. Like I mentioned, my tagging system's gonna be different than yours. No two tagging systems are going to be the same. So if you try and recreate my tagging system and it's not working for you, that's why. You have to really think about what you're doing for your work and make build a tagging system around your work and what you're currently doing. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you guys like what I'm doing, hit that like button, subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. Have a great day.